tell me what's going on for you and how I could help. Okay, so basically, um, I started studying a, almost a year ago, and uh, my diagnostic was extremely low. I started with a 130, and that was really discouraging for me because I was the lowest. I had started in um, a class, uh, prep class, and I had the lowest score, and for some reason, I couldn't grasp just like the main concepts for a good four weeks. So for me, just kind of like getting used to the language and getting comfortable with that was really hard. And then I got off to kind of a rocky start because um, I didn't think the class was useful. So then I just decided, okay, I'm gonna teach myself everything when, in, when actually what was going on was I just, I needed just a little bit more time to be, get familiar with everything, you know? So um, I started teaching myself everything and that got really complicated because I kind of picked up on some bad habits and some things that I shouldn't have been doing just because I didn't have the knowledge ahead of time. Um, now I kind of struggle sometimes to get rid of those bad habits. I just find myself when I am uncomfortable or if I see something I'm not familiar with, I kind of revert back to those old habits. So I think for me, the biggest thing is kind of breaking those under timed conditions. And I don't know what's going on because when I'm doing a blind review, I'm getting almost everything right. Mm -hmm. I'm missing maybe four or five on the whole test. Right. And okay. I'm so timing's part of an issue then. Yeah. And I'm still struggling like under timed conditions to break like a 157. Okay. And let's get more specific here. What are some of those bad habits you're describing? Um, bad habits, I would say for, uh, for reading comprehension specifically, I'm, I'm losing most of my points in comp and I think I read the passage and I almost forget what I read. Um, I, I'm not really sure how to utilize my time, I guess, because I'm not sure if the note taking, like, you know, a lot of kids have discussed if the note taking is helpful, if the highlighting is helpful, if nothing is helpful. Um, I think I'm getting kind of caught up on like the answers and I'm never getting the correct answer. It's always like the kind of the trap and I don't know why I keep falling for it, you know? I hear you. All right. So do you want to focus on reading comp a little bit for now? Yeah. Yeah. If we could do that, that would be great. Sure. All right. So in reading comp, what is your default approach that you typically end up doing? Usually what I try to do just because I would rather nail three of the passages and get them most mostly correct versus try to tackle all four even and just blow it. You know, I, I, what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to take two or three notes per paragraph. And when I say notes, I'll just write like one word. So, um, if it's like view one, view two, um, sometimes I'll put like, um, conflict, something like that, just something that reminds me. But even though I'm getting those main points written down, I'm still not answering the questions correctly, which is, it's, it's really throwing me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we could even talk about down the line about whether to do three passages or four passages. I'll leave that question aside for now and say, if we're looking to do any passage and maximize success on it, what needs to happen? So you yeah. said that you're taking very brief, minimal notes yeah. on just of just a couple of words on each paragraph. Yes. But you're still not getting the main idea. Correct. And so then when I blind review, I, I look back at my notes because I'm like, okay, where did I go wrong with, you know, am I not getting something? Am I writing something down that isn't there? Like what's going on? And my notes are matching up with how I would blind review it. But my focus isn't there when I'm under timed uh, conditions. Gotcha. Okay. And when we think about main idea of the passage as a whole, that's not a, 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 pa a paragraph specific thing, right? Yeah. So when you read the passage initially, are you so focused on the notes and the summaries that you're actually not even asking the question of what's the main idea? And that totally could be. Um, like I said, I'm kind of, a, I've, I honestly don't know how to approach it at this point because I've even lost more points. The further I've dug into it, it seems that I've lost more points. Mm -hmm. um, at the get-go, uh, get reading comp was my strongest section, and now it's my worst section. 
And I kind of think that even going so far into it and just over stressing about it has almost done me a disservice. Yeah. Sometimes the, the more work you do, the worse you end up doing. Yeah. So let's slow it down for a second. What if as an exercise, you read the three passages in a section that you want to solve and you did nothing but walk away with the main idea for each one. You just ask, what's the main idea of this passage? Aim to solve that question alone. Don't even think about paragraph summaries and okay. see what that changes for you. Okay. So when I go into the questions, nothing else, just the main idea. Yeah. So passage one, read it for the main idea, solve any main idea related questions. So that could be main idea, primary purpose. Mm -hmm. Maybe if there's a title question or a tone question, maybe you could do those too. But that's all I'd be thinking about is those general global questions that are really meant to be warm ups. And okay. they might not be the first question in the section. You might want to do things out of order uh -huh. ultimately, but for now, just aim to solve those kinds of questions based on your initial read. And later we can add in things on the details. Okay. Okay. So just for now, do that. The only problem is, is I guess, um, I do take the test here in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking the June and, um, like I said, I want to, I want to be able to utilize my time, I guess, and change anything at this point that I'm able to change. Uh, I don't want to, it's, it's kind of hard to, I think, restructure everything in two weeks. You know, I, I think a lot of kids are in the same boat, but, um, it, is that doable in two weeks or no? It's never too late to make okay. a small tweak to your approach okay. or to gain an insight that could lead to a, a massive improvement. Okay. So we're okay. not talking about fundamentally revamping your understanding of this exam as a whole. We're talking about making a tactical change in terms of what you look for going into reading a passage. Okay. All right. That makes sense. And then um, for the last passage, I usually get, once I finish three passages, I usually have about four minutes left. So with that last passage, let's just say um, worst case scenario, would you recommend going through then and picking out the questions that I can search through the last passage for without even reading it? Or what would you recommend I do with those last remaining four minutes? Go back or go forward with just trying to pick out any answers that I can find? That's a great question. If you've got just a couple of minutes remaining, like two to three minutes, yeah. I would say you may not want to start a totally new fourth passage. You may want to instead go back and double check anything you might've flagged. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Um, if you had four minutes mm -hmm. and you had nothing that you'd flagged previously, I could see there being an argument to read that fourth passage. And then once again, solve those general global main idea kinds of questions. Okay. I wouldn't get into all the details. I would simply once again, read the passage read the passage to, with an aim towards getting the main idea and the author's opinion. Okay. But I think most people are probably better off with very limited time to go back and review what they flagged. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and then as far as um, logical reasoning goes, um, one of the things I'm struggling with that is kind of parsing through strong language. When we get to the, the five-star questions, those ones... Uh, especially with sufficient assumption questions, I get tripped up because sometimes the answer is worded differently than what the conclusion is and the, you know what I mean? And the stimulus. So I guess like when things are rephrased, same meaning, but just in like a different way under timed circumstances, I, I panic and I miss those. Yeah. Part of that's part of the review process is figuring out, which words and phrases are synonymous and similar in meaning and which ones aren't. So that's definitely got to be part of your review process to figure out what made the right answer seem unappealing. Okay. What wording changes made it seem like a mismatch when in reality, those phrases do mean the same thing. Okay. So this and has got to be part of the review process. And you, we've talked a lot about blind review, but there are also plenty of other review strategies out there. And after this call, I'll send you a link to a class I taught going over other question review strategies that okay. you might want to incorporate, especially with logical reasoning, but they would actually apply to reading comp as well. Okay. Awesome. Okay. 
And do you have any like tips or little tricks that you can um, give me in terms of like, you know, when you are going through first pass, sometimes I'll just try to go through if there's a question I don't understand and I'll just try to quickly eliminate bad answers so that if I run out of time when I can come back, I've at least eliminated the answers that I know are not correct and I have a better chance of answering it correctly when I'm just, you know, clicking on the couple that I just have remaining. Are there any shortcuts that you can recommend for like specifically maybe like parallel reasoning or anything like that? Sure. Yeah. So like process of elimination, one? definitely important, an important strategy. When it comes to parallel reasoning in particular, a couple of things I would look for. One is the degree of certainty in the conclusion. Okay. So always, never, sometimes, majority mm -hmm. of the time. The other would be the category of things they're discussing. So that would be like all people versus all people who take the LSAT versus most people who take the LSAT. So you want there to be a, a proper match in terms of to what extent they qualify or limit the group they're talking about. Okay. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Um, that's good. That's good. Um, logic games. Okay, here's another one. I tend to trip up when we have sequencing and grouping games. I don't utilize my time very well because I get kind of flustered in the moment when there's a lot of different things coming at once. You know, I have some rules that are really restrictive and then I have some that are free, you know, and I just have like, you know, uh, A comes before B and C and then B has to be with uh, the red car and all these things. I just, I tend to draw out more diagrams than I need. Does that mean that I'm not doing the work ahead of the, you know, the, the work up front or what would you say is the problem there? Are you drawing out diagrams for all of the answer choices? Sometimes, sometimes I get to a question and it's like, okay, what must be true if, uh, green is with, uh, card D and I end up drawing di like two or three diagrams for that specific question. And I'm just blowing, I'm just wasting time. Yeah. Yeah. I so mean, I drawing out two or three could be okay. It all depends on the specifics, but okay. if you're drawing out all five choices, that indicates you might be doing too much. So this might be a case where we have to look at more of the specifics, but I'd also be curious to what extent are you using previous work? Okay. Yeah, previous work, that's another thing is um, sometimes I feel like I, like in the moment, I'm not going back on previous work. So maybe that's something that I have to remember to go back. Like I said, under timed, timed conditions, it's really easy, I think, to get kind of flustered and, and uh, worried about running out of time, especially if you're not confident. So that's definitely been like a really big struggle. And then seeing games, too, that I've never done before, like the miscellaneous. Do you recommend, um, is there any specific strategies or tactics you recommend for those when you, you've never seen the game before? Yeah, and that would be get comfortable being uncomfortable. So okay. do a bunch of those, get used to throwing yourself for a loop and having to adapt and recognizing that while the game may appear different, it may appear new, the same general principles that apply to all other games apply to these also. And okay. so I, I would drill those as a separate category. Not that necessarily they all have something similar to each other, but simply the fact that they are unique. Okay. And then in order to kind of get quicker and, and um, drill, would it be harmful to cut time back even like five minutes to get used to just going really quick? Or do you think that could be kind of detrimental? You mean to aim to complete this section in 30 minutes rather than 35? Yeah. That could be pushing it a little bit. Okay. Do you think you, do you have experience doing all four games in a section under time? Yeah. Yeah? Awesome. And it really yeah. just varies. Like I said, like sometimes that five minutes, I'll be completely honest and I can't explain it. There are some times where I can complete a whole section of games in 30 minutes and miss two or three, and then there's sometimes where I'm running out of time and I'm still missing those. So I guess I'm trying to figure out like what's going on, like why there's such a big, uh, a big gap. 
Yeah, well, games are different. Game sections are different. Some sections are harder than others. So yeah. variation is is normal. It's kind of funny, though, that you're asking, should you aim to do all four games in 30 minutes when we're talking about doing three reading comp passages, not four? So everyone has their areas of strength and weakness, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, if you want to aim to complete it with a little bit of a buffer, I think that's great. I think five minutes might be a little bit too big a buffer. That means you're working okay. too fast. If, but if you could do it in... 32 or 33 minutes to have a little bit of time to go back and review. That's mm -hmm. certainly not a bad thing to happen. It happens. A lot of students can ultimately get there. And I think that sort of thing is actually typically most useful on logical reasoning because to go back and review questions you flagged, they're all bite-sized and individual, not as much reintroduction you have to do. Yeah. Okay. And then in terms of the next two weeks, like where do you recommend I spend my time then? Because I want to make the most of the two weeks and I want to put forth um, efforts in areas that you think that I can probably change and, and make a difference for my score. So do you think I should focus mainly on reading comp or do you think I should um, solidify kind of like the timing with the games and make sure that I'm getting every question correct in games? Two weeks before the exam, you want to be taking time to practice tests. Yeah, I take, yeah, I, I take one every other day. Cool. So just make sure that you're reviewing those in sufficient detail, in sufficient depth. And like I said, I have a class recording I'll send you related to this, and you could implement that for your review on logical reasoning and reading comp. We talked about a lot that we also talked about for reading comp as an exercise, simply reading for the main idea. Okay, yeah. In logical reasoning, we talked about process of elimination. Yeah. And in logic games, we talked about using previous work more systematically. And so those are all things to incorporate either while you're taking these practice tests or during your review process. So I would still be working in all areas and I would incorporate it as a supplement to what you're already doing. Okay, yeah, that's confusing for me because I, I do incorporate that in the, the blind review process and I think that's why there's such a big gap is because I know I'm doing everything right in the blind review. I'm writing out which answers are wrong, why they're wrong, which answer is right and why I think it's right it's very detailed and usually I'll spend like six hours on blind review for the whole test so I'm going so in depth with that but I don't understand why it's not sticking uh, like I said under timed and there might just be maybe like a lot of pressure on my end so maybe I'm making mistakes because I feel just you know like a lot of pressure I'm not sure yeah but well blind review can get exhausting after a certain point I, I'm not surprised to hear it would take so long to do that even just for one exam and so yeah. Don't, you may not need to do it every single exam, every single time for the entire sections. You mm -hmm. may want to use it as a tool in more limited situations. And that way you have the space to bring in these other things we've talked about as well. Okay. Um, sorry, one more question. I just thought of it. Uh, sure. In terms of flaw questions, um, a lot of the harder flaw questions are sometimes I see flaws that aren't on the main list of you know, flaws. And so I guess how would you approach a question if you think you're kind of heading in that direction where you're like, okay, this is definitely a question where the flaw does not fall on that list, process of elimination or skip? I would say neither one necessarily, actually. Most okay. flaws don't fall within a classic list. Most flaws are simply the author is failing to consider something mm -hmm. or they're taking something for granted. And those okay. are really two sides of the same coin, depending on how you look at it. They're just making assumptions they shouldn't have made. That's okay. all. And so that requires real world engagement, like you were having a conversation with somebody. But you can still predict or prephrase the mistake that they made. So I don't think that this requires a process of elimination in particular. And I certainly wouldn't skip it on that basis alone. I think the majority of flaws actually are not your classic logical fallacies like personal attacks or correlation causation. So yeah. just engage with the arguments. Okay. Okay, great. Yeah, I think that's it. Those are uh, my, uh, my only questions really at this point. And I think that uh, reading comp for sure, if that, if that gap can kind of be closed and, and just maybe have a better understanding of things, that could definitely help with a lot of points. Excellent. Well, I'm really glad we connected. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, I would definitely say that uh, probably, honestly, going back on old work, like the old work and the, the help with 
the main point. I think sometimes we get wrapped up in a lot of the details on reading comp specifically, and it's really hard to not get wrapped up in the details. And like you said, going at the main point will help with the questions and the details sometimes don't help, help the answer the questions. So I think that'll be helpful. Awesome. Well, keep in touch and let me know if you need anything at all as you move forward. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.